First item on the agenda is consider approval of previous meeting minutes of previous previous meeting held Thursday, July 19th, 2018. Second. Mr. Marsh, yes. Mr. <coughs> yes. Mr. Yes. Mr. Yes. 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 The second item, we've got a full courtroom today, which is kind of unusual, so it's a, it's a good thing uh, to be here today. We've got some young ladies and young men in this community that we need to be very proud of. Um, the proclamation to name Friday, August 3rd, as 10U Little League Softball Day, along with recognizing 12U Girls Softball, Little League Runner-Up, and 10U Boys Baseball, Little League District Champs. So we've got a group of 10-year-old, uh, 9, 10-year-old girls, is that correct? Uh, here's the proclamation if I think Larry or Steve or John or Craig or whoever wants to hand these out when they come up. We've got a... Yeah. The proclamation reads, whereas our Marion County 910 softball all-stars have earned the 2018 Kentucky Little League state title, and whereas our Marion County 910 softball all-stars went 4-0, to win its fourth 10U state championship, including three in the last four. And whereas our Marion County nine 10 year old softball all-stars won the district tur tournament by a combined score of 30 to nothing. Jeez. Making it the eighth district title in the age division in the last nine years. And whereas the Marion County nine 10 year old softball all-stars, including uh, Tori, if you want to come up, Tori Gribbins, Thirty to nothing. That's pretty, that's rather dominant, isn't it? Mm -hmm. <laughs> it's called no mercy. That's true. <laughs> that, that's no mercy. Kendra Gaddy. <coughs> Abigail Million. <laughs> Haley Mattingly. <laughs> Carly Spalding. Chloe Spears, Portland Confer, Lexi Hall, Kaylee Wright, Kenley Craig, Shelby Joe Craig, Allie Cecil and Claire Benningfield. We also like to recognize the parents and coaches Jonathan Spalding, Greg Gaddy, Kirby Gribbins, and Mark Hall. Thank you. Look forward to next year. <laughs> yeah. Good job, girls. Way to go. Thank you so much. The last five. Yeah. There goes our crowd. Yeah, I, thought I thought they were really here to see us. Future voters. <laughs> the next item on the agenda is to consider approval to surplus 20 ton low boy trailer from road department and advertise for bids. That's the last year we built a new one of these trailers. So. Yeah. Second. Mr. Yes. 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 What year did you say the trailer was, Jimmy? 1973. So I think wow. it's a lot of use out of I that. I think it's been, a, been been around the county a little bit. I'd say we've de we've depreciated that. I'd say we have. Yes, you are graduating. It is old, isn't it? Was that when they had the one room schoolhouse things? Or? No. Actually, it was what the second year of Mary County High School. Third. Third. Yeah. Yeah. 
Second year out. Item number four, consider approval of the amendment to the Kentucky 911 network agreement. Sharon Browning has, has got some information on that that can share with us, kind of. Those numbers you're talking about, um, th those are for landlines. The, the um, associates yeah. landline. Well, how do they do uh, cell phones? They don't have a name associated with them, do they? they just got to locate, like if a cell phone calls, they don't really have a cell name. Phone calls basically, with E911, because we're enhanced, they basically plot where they're at. Longitude, where a call comes from. Okay. So there's not a name. That's what it is. So they don't have to update to. Yeah. Year. You can dial an 800 number and uh, you can actually get a name. I think you can get a name to a cell phone. But they don't have to worry about an address because it's mobile, so it could be. Right. But okay. With the cell phones, you know, yeah. theoretically, hopefully, whenever they call, uh, the dispatcher's going to look at the map and it's going to show exactly where that phone is. So I don't have to go through this other right. stuff. Okay. No, that's actually, uh, that's where CMRS comes in to play, uh, the tax portion on CMRS. That's where we get the funds in. Yeah, the Kentucky 911 services account. So that's what everybody that has a cell phone pays a dollar surcharge. If you look at your phone bill, you'll see there's an E911 surcharge. And so that's, that's basically what's funding our E911 operation. Yep. And quarterly, the 911 board sends the check out to the county the surcharges. We don't get the whole dollar because part of it, 10% goes into a grant fund. And of course, we've applied for the grant for the last two years and neither year did we receive it. So we don't get it all back, but we get 90% of it back. And also, LFUCG does a very good job of uh, managing the network as far as controlling cost. You know, uh, the 2% and actually the fee, the $969 uh, per seat, that's cheap in comparison to if we had our own backbone network and so forth. So, I mean, it, it's really good. Yeah. yeah, very, very cost effective. Motion to approve. Second. Mr. Yes. Yes. Mr. Bishop. Yes, Mr. Master. <coughs> uh, the second item, Sharon Brennan, is also going to help us with that. Consider approval of in-digital text 911 agreement. It's an integrated approach to text to 911. Uh, Sharon, if you want to help us out there, too. Okay. There's two options, and Judge, I'm going to discuss. Basically, uh, so the RPCF would like to go to text to 911. That's where you can text. Um, Kentucky is kind of, there aren't, don't think there are any counties, maybe there's some big test sites. Are you aware? Yeah, actually, uh, Frank, yeah, actually Franklin County, Frankfort is actually operating with the text 911 now. Okay. Yeah, but I think they're the only one. 
I think you're right. I so think that's in. Really, there are instances that it would definitely be effective and maybe save a life. So uh, they decided we could either go with what they call texting with the company called InDigital, and that would be adding another vendor, or we could have gone with Lexington, LFUCG. They're our piggyback there who we can work with already, and so I'm a one-stop shop like a person. And so I was kind of glad the judge um, they decided to go with Lexington. Um, the cost to install the text and I'm on one. So the initial, it's a one-time installation cost of $4,000. Now, Lexington will actually go through in digital, who also has a, a program. The difference though was Robert Stack with Lexington said that if we went the other route with another thing, with the digital separate, it's not an integrated service, so this is integrated with solar. Yeah. Don't argue you might explain well, that. Yeah, basically it's it's integrated with their network, so it's tied onto their network and we are part of their network. So what they're saying is basically is that if there's an issue or a problem, we're covered under that umbrella to where if we, we could go within digital on our own on the outside, but then we'd be outside of that primary network. So I agree with you. But I mean, obviously, they've been very good. So anything we can do to stay within the network and to get the support from A and K and so forth, I think that's where, we, would you agree? I think that's where we need to go. Okay. So the cost is an initial one-time install, four thousand um, dollars, and then there's a monthly recurring circuit cost that's based on the number of anticipated counties with Lexington. Lexington has, I think, 26 counties that piggyback like Marion County does. Right now, we're on the forefront because Lexington is July first. They hooked, they started the process. Um, Jessamine County and Bluegrass 911, which is Garrett and Lincoln County combined. So we would be the fourth county. So the monthly cost for the circuit is $1,260 and $30.66. And but that's divided by all the counties that are participants. So right now there's four. So that there's a good chance that down the road more counties within the uh, network will join. And when that happens, then we'll, we'll all share that cost. So right now, we're looking at $315 a month. So basically, the total cost to install text to 911 is $4,315. Well, $4,000, and then $315, $17 a month. So let me ask you this. Uh, the 4, 000, well, I take it that the $4,000 and the three fifteen dollars per month, that would be coming... Mr. Cochran, would that come out of our CMRS funding? That would come yeah. out of the 911. Okay. All right. So we're in yes. good shape there. We already got it set up. That $4,000 includes the setup, carrier coordination, um, the network setup labor, the network termination device, and on site equipment installation. And Tandy Hubbard, who is the director, uh, she said it would take about six months for the process because we have, she has to notify the carriers. And then they have a certain amount of time to do their linking up. So start the 315 when it's in place, or? Yeah. Start off, it would be 315 and It won't take effect until oh. they're activated. Now, the question okay. I've got is that when it comes into our dispatch, for example, uh, is Tandy associated with InDigital? Or? Tandy mm. is like the. Um, no, I know she's the guru, but. The oh, okay. The okay. Well, I guess the only question I have, the one thing that I'd want to make sure of is that, and uh, thinking of the dispatchers, is just make sure to get with Tandy and that when, if and when we implement the network, that our dispatchers understand the process and so <coughs> forth as far as, because it will come into 911. So, they, yeah, yeah. Try. yeah. Well, I, I didn't hear that, so I just want to make yeah, sure. They will, they will, that does include training, and then AK Associates will have to come out and train. But we don't know the cost of that. Okay. The, you know, the main, the main purpose of texting, and of course, every, as we know, all our kids use texting. That's, you know, all the time. But the main, in 911, uh, there's a lot of people that utilize text uh, messaging and so forth, such as uh, elderly and so forth, have 
uh, all in there. Exactly, the phone devices and so forth. So, for 315 bucks, that's a that's a cheap price to pay, I would think. Mm -hmm. I agree. Plus, it should go down if more. Yeah. I'm thinking more people. Hopefully, it'll be decreasing. And the as the city as the city addressed this yet? Because I guess uh, technically, even though even though we handle the CMRS funds, I guess the city would have to. Be on board. willing to go along yeah. with this. Yeah, they're on, the, they're on the agreement as well. Okay. Motion to approve. Thank you, Sharon. Yes. Yes. Thank you, Sharon. Thank you, Sharon. on the agenda is consider approval to allow Sharon to go to emergency service conference. When is that, Sharon? Well, she's worked so hard on this other stuff, I'd hate to say no now, would you? <laughs> what do you think? It is. It's excellent. Is, uh, is Lori also going? Okay. I'll just make sure. Oh, okay. okay. Motion to approve. Second. Mr. Yes. 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 Thank you. Thank you again, Sharon. Thank you, Ms.